Hello chemistry students, welcome to colligative properties as we introduce what they are and a few facts about them. So to start with, you need to make sure that you have your notes out and you want to make sure that you are pausing the video to write down the proper notes as we move through this section. And we're going to begin here uh, looking at the definition of colligative properties. And basically you need to know that they are properties that depend only on the number of solute particles, not their identity. So we began looking at some of these different properties, uh, such as freezing point and boiling point. We're going to mention briefly about vapor pressure, and then osmotic pressure we're not going to talk too much about, as it's something uh, that, that we'll reserve for a later time. So let's continue here by looking at what vapor pressure is. So vapor pressure here, this is important, you want to jot this down, uh, is basically the pressure uh, as a result of the evaporating solvent. So in this picture here, you see that these gas molecules or these, uh, sorry, water molecules are escaping up into their gas phase and they're going to form a uh, gas above the liquid and this is going to be called vapor pressure. So solvent molecules must be at the surface of the liquid to evaporate. A surface molecule gets bumped from below and is launched into the vapor phase. And that's kind of what I was depicting over here in the diagram. Now let's actually go ahead and take a look at what something actually looks like when it's forming a vapor pressure. This is an apparatus for measuring the vapor pressure of a liquid at a given temperature. The U-tube attached to the flask contains liquid mercury, which is used to measure a change in pressure. What happens at the molecular level during evaporation? In the beginning, the traffic is only one way. Molecules are moving from the liquid to the empty space. Soon the molecules in the space above the liquid establish a vapor phase. As the concentration of molecules in the vapor phase increases, some molecules return to the liquid phase, a process called condensation. Eventually, the number of molecules leaving the liquid is equal to the number of molecules returning to the liquid. A state of dynamic equilibrium is reached as the rates of evaporation and condensation become equal. The difference in mercury level, represented by H, is the equilibrium vapor pressure of the liquid at the given temperature. So the diagram here in the, this animation really shows that these gases forming up here, they, they reach a constant state. And that constant state there we know is dynamic equilibrium, where for each solvent, so each different type of liquid that you put in here, uh, that's going to be a little different depending on that liquid, and it's really its ability to dissolve, uh, to evaporate or not. And remember, that was a term we talked about, and we call it as volatile, uh, whether it easily evaporates or not. So now that we've seen a little bit about how vapor pressure actually looks and functions in that animation, uh, we can go on to seeing that vapor pressure is dependent on the temperature of the solution. If you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the vapor pressure. Uh, it is a direct relationship. So increase, increase, excuse me there, temperature, you will increase the vapor pressure. And then the last part here we want to make note is that in a closed container, the vapor pressure will always reach a constant level at any given temperature. So in that animation that we saw, it was a closed container. It had a lid on it. And that um, as long as it's in a closed container, it will reach a constant level uh, no matter what. So let's go ahead and continue here by looking at the vapor pressure of not a pure solvent. So in, in this case, it was a pure solvent, just water, uh, just acetone, just some other liquid. Now we want to look at more specifically, what if it is a uh, solution vapor pressure? So solution vapor pressure, again, what happens to the chance of a solvent molecule, noted here as the blue, escaping if there are solute, noted as the red particles, in the solution? And the red solute particles are going to reduce 
the chances of their escape. Look, they are blocking some of these molecules from escaping out. Therefore, the vapor pressure of the solution is going to be lower for a solution. So that is a very significant point to understand here. Uh, between a pure solvent, a uh, vapor pressure is higher for a pure solvent higher for a pure solvent than for a solution. Understand this. So why is this that we have changes in our vapor pressure? So let's go ahead and look at the changes. We have non-volatile solutes, which again, this is a, again, they do not uh, easily evaporate. So they are always lower the vapor pressure of the solution. The solute solvent interactions are what contribute to this effect. So the particles of the solute are surrounded by and attracted to the particles of the solvent. Now the solvent particles have less kinetic energy and tend less to escape into the space above the liquid. So you can see these two examples here, volatile solvent, which means again it is going to easily evaporate, versus the red dots here are your non-volatile solute. They kind of block and they interfere with the sol uh, vent evaporating into its gas phase. Therefore, the pure solvent is always going to have a higher vapor pressure than something that has um, a solute dissolved into it. So let's look at how the vapor pressure that's affected by adding a solute to a solvent also changes uh, the boiling and freezing points of the solutions. So the, present of the presence of a solute uh, affects the boiling and freezing points of a liquid. Both boiling point is always, or I'm sorry, boiling point is always increased and that is what we have a vocab term as boiling point elevation. We noted that the vapor pressure is going to be lower to start with because you've added a solute uh, to the solution. Uh, the liquid must be hotter for the vapor pressure to equal the pressure of the gas above the liquid, which is what we've noted as the dynamic equilibrium. So let me kind of write that in there. Again, this is a good point to note here in that the solute-solvent interactions also cause the solutions to have higher boiling points and lower freezing points than a pure solvent. I would say this statement is very significant to know. We're going to go ahead and give it five stars. Got to know that point there for colligative properties. And you see the graph here, it actually shows the boiling point temperature of a pure solvent as your black line. Once um, you've added here the boiling point temperature uh, with a solute to it, and you are increasing temperature uh, in this direction, so you can see it has a higher boiling point uh, given at the same pressures for those two substances.